Welcome to Worship Tutorials. Got a quick guitar lesson for you today. How to play better rhythm parts as an electric guitar player. Uh, so let's take a chord progression. You've got the chords, we're in the key of G here. We got G, C, D, and E minor. G, C, D, E minor. Now if you're primarily an acoustic guitar player, that's probably what you've done all your life. It's what I always did when I played G, C, D, E minor. If you're making the transition to electric guitar, that's probably how you know to play that progression, but there's a better way. I'm gonna show it to you and then I'll teach it. It goes like this, G, C, D, E minor. Ooh, isn't that nice? These are essentially power chords. Now you might think power chord, you might know this. Right? You might know those power chords for G, C, D, E minor. This is power chords up higher on the neck. This is your G chord. You only want those three strings. So what I like to do is I like to take my middle finger and mute those strings, and then I'm muting the high E string with my pinky right here. Use the flesh of your other fingers to mute it. So then you can you can strum away all you like, and you're not gonna like have those other strings ringing. So the notes for this is G, right? This one is a D, and this is a G. G, D, G, it's not even a triad, it's just two notes. Next chord we're gonna play is a C, and it's really easy move to make. It's, uh, you just take your middle finger off, you're barring your uh, D and G strings with your index finger on the fifth fret, You've got a C, or sorry, you've got a G. I should've known because I just said that was a G. This is a C, and this is a G up here. So you're just playing these three notes, right? I'm gonna get my other fingers out of the way so you can see it. And I like to do the same thing. I'm muting these two strings with this finger, muting the high E string with my pinky. And you can easily switch between the G and the C, just like one finger move. One, four, one, four, okay? Now the next chord is a D chord, so we're gonna take that C shape we just did, and if you move it up two frets, you've got a D. Now we've got an A, we've got a D, and we've got an A. So that's our sort of uh, D power chord. It's kind of an inversion because the first note you're playing is not a D, but in the context of this, it's a D chord. The last thing we're gonna do is the E minor chord. Now, if you know your bar chords, you might know that this is an E minor. It's an A minor shape up here with a bar across the seventh fret. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna play the top three strings of that chord, and it is E, G, and E. And uh, if you play it, you can play it this way where you bar everything. Uh, but you just kind of lay your index finger across these strings and just grab the high E with your index finger. And then you've got this on the ninth and eighth frets. Okay, again, G, C, D, E minor. So I'm gonna play for you what that sounds like uh, with some reverb delay and overdrive. It sounds like this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of practical application. Why would you use this? And I'm gonna give you a third way you can play these chords as well. So the third way to play them is, we talked to, I talked about these being power chords, right? So it's just two notes. It's a one and a five, essentially. You can play those same collection of notes down here for a G. Right, so now you've got your G, you got your C, you got your D, and then you just move it up for your E minor. So it's the same, actually, the same shape, just you kind of on different strings. Now, if you've played guitar much and you've ever gone into power chords, those are the power chords you've, you've learned, right? So now we have three different ways to play this progression. We got the open chords, like the cowboy chords, G, C, D, E minor. Now we've got the sort of the low bar chords, if you will. 
G, C, D, E minor. And then we've got these higher voiced power chords or almost like inversions of those power chords. So you've got three ways to play this progression in your arsenal. Why would you pick one versus the other? First of all, it helps you with arrangement. So all of the instrumentation in the band, the keys, all the guitars, uh, everything basically except drums and bass are fighting for the same set of frequencies. All of it lives in the mid range. So if you as a guitar player can do something to differentiate yourself from the other instrumentation, say there's another electric guitar player or there's an acoustic player and they're playing these shapes or even these shapes. If you can play these shapes, you can uh, sit in a different sort of place in the mix. It helps everything sound bigger and fuller and fewer things are fighting for the same set of frequencies. So number one, uh, arrangement. It helps you with arrangement. Two, uh, it's very similar to that. If you're in a two guitar player situation, it just gives you something else to play. So you might, you might say to the other guitar player, okay, you're gonna play low. I'm gonna play high. Right, and it gives you uh, different things to play from the other guitar players in the band. And then finally, what it lets you do, say you're the only guitar player in the band. You're playing, uh, let's, let's be honest, we're playing these worship songs, we're doing four bridges and five choruses, right? Things get repetitive, it allows you to play different things in different parts of the song. So one thing I always like to do is I like to save the lower stuff for the biggest sections of the song. Bradford talks about this a lot. He's like, never play an open chord until like the biggest part because that's where you're gonna have all of your, like that D, right? That D has a lot more energy in it than this D. Well, it, it kind of depends. It's just a, it just hits different, Nick. It just hits different. <laughs> if you will. Okay, so what it allows you to do is like, say I'm playing a song that has this progression in it or some progression like this. It, it's literally every song, let's be honest, okay? And I'm playing this part, maybe with uh, some light drive and some, and some other effects. And then I hit a big section of the song, right? And I turn on the, a bigger drive and I'm... Now there's a lot more, like these lower notes will carry a lot more energy and it just gives you different things to play if you wanna hit uh, different sections of the song. A final point is if you're using a lot of effects, right? In this example, I did on purpose because uh, if you're using heavy reverbs and delays, the fewer notes that you play, the fewer strings that you play, the better, right? So uh, if you play this chord, there's all the notes in the G chord. If you play that with all of your reverbs and delays, it's gonna be a hot mess compared to that uh, with all these heavy uh, wet effects. So it helps sort of clean things up. You could even take it a step further and take that fifth out and just play an octave. And that's even gonna clean it up more and help you, it's a more of a focused sound uh, if you will. So practice those parts. The application of this is you want to get to a point where you can play this progression without thinking about it. See, I'm trying to do it while I talk. You wanna be able to play it just as easy as you can play this progression. It should become that sort of second nature to you. Uh, and then we can branch out into other keys. But this is, it, this is great because if you're gonna play an A, you just move everything up two frets right, or B is just a few higher and C is a few, is one higher than B, if you follow me. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, please do subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.